Well, hello and welcome to the show. We've been talking about colt starting and we're gonna spend more time today. Today, we're gonna to go through the process of saddling this colt and getting him ready for us to get on his back. That's coming up right here on Discovering the Horseman Within. Gonna take a ride on one true horse. So in the last couple of sessions, we've worked on getting this colt to where he'll move around the pen and follow us and pay attention to us. And then we've sacked him out. So as we come back to this session, we wanna kinda of start and make sure we're still locked on right there. I wanna know that this young horse is still focused on me and staying with me. And I wanna see those feet move forward a little bit. In that last piece, there we go. He kinda of got to where he was sucked tight back against the fence. I wanna see this front end come free right there a little bit more, really. I really wanna see him come forward a little bit more. I'm gonna move him around a little bit. You notice I've got the halter and lead rope in my hand. As I prepare to saddle him, I wanna change things just a little bit. He's just kind of almost got a little bit of hesitation in him and I want that hesitation to go away. Lots of times I see people working young horses and they say, well, I just didn't know that something was gonna go wrong. It's things like this you kind of have to pay attention to. You have to watch him right here. And when you notice we're not where we were, you need to change something. There we go. I see, I want that front end to come forward more. If you notice, he's tied pretty tight to that rail. I want him to bring that front end out. There we go, that's better. I'm kind of leading him away from the fence with my body. There, right there, that's what I was looking for. I need him to just kind of relax and accept it and trust me a little bit. There you go, you hear that big sigh? He's thinking it through and decided it's okay. As I come back here, I'm gonna halter him. The reason I'm gonna halter him is because as I get ready to saddle him, I've seen some bad things happen when people don't get their saddles on tight. So I used to saddle all of my colts loose at Liberty, and I love it. it makes you do your socking out work really good. But I truly believe you're responsible for what you teach. And so for me, a few years ago, I just decided from now on, when I go to the saddle, I'll have my halter and lead rope on my horse so that I know I'm giving them the best shot. Because when, when you lose a saddle on a colt like this and you have a big wreck, it's actually damaging to him. So I want to get to where I'm giving him the best shot. We socked him out with this pad. He's seen it, but we're going to bring it back, let him look at it, kind of remember what it is, run it up his shoulder, move it around him. I always like to start treating my young horses, my unbroke horses, as if they were broke. I like to start treating them like old, gentle, broke horses. So when I saddle them, I saddle them like broke horses. So I carry my saddle up and let him see it. Let him smell it. Let him feel it on his shoulder, right there. Keep this lead rope short enough that I can keep him, his front end to me. I keep the saddle tucked under my right shoulder. And as I turn, I just lift my right hand to, the, to my nose, kind of. And right there. That's what I'm looking for, just set that saddle on him. Now, how many times should you take it on and off him? That's up to you. Put it on and off him as much as you want to. You can take it on, put it off, back and forth, whatever you want to do, okay? So what I want to do is get it where it's really comfortable. Look at my horse. Does he look scared? No. Then I'm good. I don't need to keep doing it, right? So I'm going to come over here and drop my cinches. Now, if you'd have started Colts with me 20 years ago, I would have told you 
Make sure you have everything perfect. Now I say, don't worry about it. There's a truck and trailer pulling in behind us. My horse is looking at it. Is he still with me? Yes, he is. The fact that my cinch isn't perfect when I start, good. That's perfect. Now my horse has to act like a broke horse. If, he, if everything is exactly right, then what is it gonna happen the first time that it's not exactly right? Then all of a sudden there's something new and different. So I wanna make sure that I give him the opportunity to learn to accept things so that it's not the first time. Colt starting is all about tomorrow. It's all about the next day, the years to come. I don't like to think of colt starting as something that just happens today or just when he's a two or three year old. This is a three year old, right? This is what's establishing the foundation for the rest of his life. So one of the analogies that I use, if you've ever, if you've ever built fence, when you dig a fence post hole, right there, pull that up tight, then let it down. Pull it up tight then let it down. If you've ever dug a fence post hole, you know when you tamp the post, if you tamp the bottom six inches tight and then do kind of a good job on the rest, the post will stay tight. If you leave the bottom six inches loose and tamp the whole post tight, the whole post will stay loose. You know why? The foundation is critically important. Same thing on a horse. When you're working a young horse, get this foundation right. Okay, so as I pull that cinch up, I pull it up really snug. I want it tight, okay? I don't want this saddle to slip and I don't want my young horse to get in trouble. So, reach back here. When I pull up the back cinch, I pull it up snug. I adjusted that back cinch too short. So I'm gonna come back over here and I'm gonna let it down on this side a little bit. That's what I'm talking about. I like my horse to learn to get saddled the way any other horse does. Now, that saddle set down on him, okay? Quick, get out of the way. No, 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 no. You're not gonna run from the wreck. You actually need to just stay the same. Remember what I told you the other week, <clears throat> and that is the only thing that sneaks in their world, the only things that sneak, eat them. So don't act sneaky, stay relaxed, stay calm. When I step away from him, I wanna give him just a minute to think about it, and then ask him to step off. What if he bucks? It's okay. He just got grabbed around the belly, front and back with a saddle strapped on on top. He might jump, that's okay. You're gonna try your best not to let that happen. Right there. You see that tight movement? Relax. Immediately when I relaxed, he relaxed, his head comes down, his mouth starts relaxing. That's what I want to see. I want to make this as easy for him as I possibly can. Right there. Good. Just move his feet a little bit. I would rather that he never learn to buck. It's okay if he does. Uh, it's okay if he bucks with the saddle. It's not the end of the world but I would rather that I could keep him from doing that. There we go. He's moving out nice and relaxed, but as the saddle comes around, look at the space underneath the back of that saddle. That young horse is tight. That saddle is arched up like that because he's nervous and scared. So our job right now is just work him into that saddle as quietly as we can. Let him trot around here, just flat, nice and easy. There we go. Doing what I can to make this as easy for him as possible. And to me, that's critically important. That's a big part of what Colt's starting this. Now, in a minute, we're gonna turn him loose and move him around. And we're going to go back to the round pen and let him kind of move. But we've given him the best opportunity we could. All right, so I'm going to kind of change things up a little bit here. I'm going to put my tools that I don't need away. So I don't need this pad anymore, this blanket. I've tied my lead rope up there where he can kind of have access to it. And I'm just going to send him off and go back over the round pen lessons. I'll walk him out of here. But... 
he needs to go through every gate that I'm going to ride on his back without me. So I'm going to push him up to a lope. And right there, get after him a little bit. Hey. Stay after him, don't just let him buck. Hey, hey. Hey, 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 hey. Now, I'm gonna fix that halter and lead rope. I wish that wouldn't have come loose, but it did. Okay, so, we had that hump in his back. That's okay. We'll live with it. We thought we had it out. We didn't. It's still there. You're okay. You're okay, little friend. Okay. We'll send him off again. Okay, we're going to push him back up to a lope. Drive him up to a lope. Come on, there we go. Want that inside turn just like I did before. There. Send him off. Move him out, pick him up to a lope. There we go. Ask for that inside turn. Send him off. Ask for that inside turn. There. Kind of jumping around, got some of that tension out of his system. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Now, we're gonna come back here. Kind of pop and bang that saddle. Grab that back cinch. Up those stirrups. Check your front cinch. Make sure it's snug. It is. Tight. Not snug. Tight. You don't want the saddle coming loose. None of that's really bothering him too much. He's taking that all in stride. He's okay with that. Okay. With this colt all along, it's been what he thinks uh, about that gets him in trouble. So we're going to send him out again. And it's things that kind of happen new and different and sudden. So we're going to play a little game. You don't have to do this the way I'm going to do it. You could put this rope on the saddle right there standing next to him. It can be any old lead rope. And I want to suddenly do things different. Okay, right there. Let him feel it behind him. Right there, just socking him out with something different. See if he'll give to that pressure. Good. Okay. I would have loved for him to give and turn, but the truth is, right there, he knew the answer was face me for the release. And so that's what he did. Honestly, that's as good as if he had gone ahead and given to the pressure because he figured out, quit moving your feet when you're afraid. Perfect. Send him off and pull on that cinch right there. All right, I just hooked that lariat 
right up there with the lead rope on the saddle horn. And I just pull on it right there. That's adding my body pressure to the cinch. Now I rope on all of my horses, so I don't pull long enough for him to stop. I just pull from that saddle horn and let him feel it. He feel, it pulls on his neck a little bit. It pulls on the saddle. We've kind of just wrapped him all over. Now I'll just take it forward and let it go under his belly. Keep him moving. Now I'll throw it up over the saddle horn, pull it up around his belly a little bit, and take it back behind his tail. Let him feel that. There. I love that. I want to get him all wrapped up. Let him feel all of that nonsense. And because we did our sacking out with the rope earlier, it's not really bothering him. We've given him a chance to think about something besides the saddle while he's traveling around getting used to it. And that's what I want to see. I want to see this young horse really get comfortable. And that's what's happening here. He's getting to where he doesn't care about much of anything I do. So from there, I'm ready to move it forward, right? I'm ready to take this to the next step in my riding. I'll coil my rope up here. And again, for me, this is an important tool. It's one I'm very comfortable with, okay? But I'll put it right there on the ground and I'm gonna come back over here and just go back over my saddle. Now here's one of the things I like to do. I'm gonna take him out a little bit away from the fence. When I'm riding this horse, I'm gonna be on both sides of him. So I bat the saddle back and forth across like this, shorten that lead rope into my hand, and then I'll grab that stirrup and stop it just like that. Let him feel it. I step away from him so that I can push off if he spooks. He's not caring. That's not bothering him. I really like this little horse. And I've kind of watched him since he was born and known he was one I was gonna ride. Ah, I started his sire, was there when we started his mother, helped with it. Ah, and I love to get second and third generations uh, of horses we've raised. So uh, I, I love to start doing that. And this horse is really coming along right where I want him. I'm gonna take that lead rope now and just kind of think about preparing him for a ride just a little more. This is groundwork he had as a baby. Just bring it back now with the saddle. Let him feel that. You're just gonna come across here. Let him feel, whoa. Look for those holes, fix them. Find them and fix them. There you go. Right there, let him come around. The more of this stuff you do, the more you play with him, the easier it's going to be to have a safe, gentle, broke horse. I'm not running a whole bunch of motorized equipment around him or throwing beach balls at him. I don't really care if you do that, but to me, what I'm doing is just developing a relationship between him and I. And that's critical so that I know how he's gonna respond and he knows what he can expect from me as we go forward in our riding career together. As a young man and, and even younger, my dad used to tell me of all the character traits, Ken, one of the most important ones you can ever get, keep, and, and, and have the rest of your life is flexibility. Flexibility is the willingness to compromise or change as the situation requires. When we become brittle, there's not much you can do, right? When, we, when our attitude gets brittle, there's not much change to us. If you think about Play-Doh for a minute, remember when you were a kid in kindergarten, if you were like me, you left the lid off of your Play-Doh. When you came back the next day, it was hard and crusty and brittle. You couldn't do anything with it. The only way to save the Play-Doh was to pour water on it, put the lid on it, shake it up, and come back a day later. And at that point, your Play-Doh will have absorbed the moisture and become pliable again. Sometimes our hearts are the same way. Lots of times we become brittle and stale and we can't be moved. We lose that flexibility. And a lot of times without some real struggles, we do not readapt and become flexible again. I really believe that our attitudes for the most part 
are a choice we make. We choose what to do. And, and these character traits are something we choose. We, we aren't just born with them. We develop them. They're taught to us. They're, we're trained in them. And then we hold on to those pieces. Being flexible is a choice that we make. We wake up in the morning and say, yes, today I will adjust. I will compromise as the situation requires. And then when the situation requires, we have to remember the commitment that we made that morning. I'm frequently reminded of the the old saying Lord I've done well today and I've, I've been polite and I've had a good attitude and I haven't gotten in any fights with anybody but I'm about to get out of bed in a minute could you help me from then on right it's a choice that we make we have to make that choice in the morning and then carry it with us all day long keep it with us make it a part of our heart and what we're doing all day long this young horse has come a long way today Right? And, and through this saddling process, he took it, he's quiet, relaxed. I always want to see that. I want to see my horse look as good at the end of the session as he did at the beginning. No sweat, no hyper fear, nice and relaxed. Those are things I look for. Next week, we're getting up in that saddle. We're going to go for a ride. Remember, tune in with us to watch that next week. And until then, may God bless the trails you ride. Find out more about Ken McNabb horsemanship at KenMcNabb.com. That one true horse, the perfect partner built to ride. One true horse, a bond that cannot be denied. You would search forever just to have the chance to take a ride.